Oh, there was a little screw up at the beginning of the show. Mm. Isn't that sexy? Look at that sexy And I raise you a Look at that sexy beast. Dojo. That wasn't even planned. It's Smoke Night Live. It's Smoke Night Live. Here we go. And it's, it's Unicorn Night on the Dojo. By the way, this is um, Friday, April 28th. The year 2017, in case, you know, you're watching this back in like a, uh, a bunker somewhere in the future, and you just want to know when this was taped. Post-apocalyptic Post show, and um, so it's, it's April 28th, it's a Friday, 2017, it's Unicorn Night on the Dojo. It's, this is episode, Jordan, Matt, this is episode 98. 98. 98. We're inching, we're inching up to episode 100 God. and it couldn't get better than tonight because we have this week's been crazy it's unicorn night on the dojo i'm gonna kill this and we're gonna talk about this with our guests here in a second but i'm gonna kill this unicorn on the show live on the show am this i visible on friends. your show yet is it this is, yeah we're live, we're live man. this is one of my favorite cigars of all time and uh, it's the original, original, the original, original One Shot, One Kill by Room 101 Brands. So I'm going to kill this here in a second on the show. But I just want to show it first because I'm so excited about it. I've been saving it. And just I smell it every now and then because, you know, it's just you paper. You can't smell through the paper. But I do it anyway. I like to smell the paper. This is some good paper right here. Uh, but it's a big week because it's Unicorn Week, and we're giving away. I'm going to show what we're giving away first, and then we're going to introduce our guest. We got this box of uh, Nortenos that we're giving away. This is the uh, Facebook and Twitter contest that I'm going to pick randomly tomorrow. But we're giving this guy away. So these are unicorns. You can't buy these bad boys anymore. Or at least they don't make them anymore. You might be able to find them and buy them. And then we're also giving away a box of feral pigs. Ooh. Ooh, and our guest that I'm going to introduce in a minute is going to pick the winner for these guys later on the show. But all these um, these amazing cigars are courtesy of our friends at Payless Cigars and Pipes. They're a, a Colorado company, and uh, they got a great online store. In fact, if you use coupon code DOJO17, you save 17% on any order, any order. Any order. That's incredible. And these guys gave us this stuff to give away. Sponsored. I mean, they sponsored it. They sponsored this stuff. Look at that. A box of pigs. Somebody's going to win. Somebody is going to win this tonight on the show. It's going to be exciting. All right. So uh, without further ado, uh, the last time we had our guest on the show, things got weird. And I mean weird in a good way. Things and that show, crash. that show goes down in the annals of the, uh, the one of the best smoke night lives of all time. Wouldn't you say, boys? It was, it was amazing. So, without further ado, let's let's bring on our guest, uh, Matt Booth. How are you doing, my friends? <laughs> I'm great, man. How are you? I'm great. Uh, Can they so, see me now? Am I now visible? Yes. Your you, listenership. A minute ago, you were invisible, but right now, you are visible. You are on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, annals. You have to be careful saying that word. You got to get it just right. But um, hey, the annal takes a lot of finesse. If, uh, it does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it does. So hey, so Matt, so much has happened since the last time you were on the show. Remember That's the true. whole feet in the ramen thing? It's true. It's fantastic. You started a whole viral thing of feet in the ramen which was amazing it, get, it but, should gets viral it yeah, happens it got viral the it, the animal got viral and so but a lot has happened since then that was uh, a year ago i think february or something uh -huh. but since then you have announced you're leaving this you left the cigar industry i mean uh, it was a shocking and sad day in my life. What what happened? It was shocking and sad to me too. You know, uh, I had to patch out though, man. I had to do it. It wasn't. Uh, 
you know, uh, the decision was a heavy one and not one uh, that was made hastily by any stretch of the imagination. And, you know, um, over the last uh, eight, nine years, uh, dabbling in the cigar stratosphere, uh, you know, I have other, other facets of my business and each one of them would receive attention or not receive attention depending on whom you know, which set of flowers and plants I was watering at any given moment, you know? Yeah. And we were coming to some very, we were building up some very critical mass on one of the other sides of our business. And uh, there were a lot of things uh, that were either in question or questionable about our beloved cigar industry. Mm. And uh, I had the opportunity to take a step back at that time and I chose to take it, you know? And I regret very little uh, in my life, mostly because uh, the things that I should regret, I've probably done well whilst drinking very heavily. Uh, and therefore, if I don't remember, it didn't happen. And therefore, I don't have to regret it. However, uh, you know, it's, it, it is a decision that, that still weighs on me. And, I, you know, uh, I would love to, you know, who knows, man, maybe, maybe just get back uh, someday in the future into doing something cool, creative, you know, on a very much more relaxed, uh, level, you know, but for the time being, I just had to take a break, man. So how long, how long was this decision brewing in, in you? I mean, was this something that happened rapidly and like, uh, you know, within a couple of weeks, Hey man, I'm just, I can't take it. I'm done. Or was this something that you sort of sensed coming you know, for uh, months. How, how did that happen? Uh, I mean, it was it was brewing over a couple years, man. But a lot oh. of things that came to light last year kind of kind of solidified, uh, helped me solidify my decision. You know, um, the business is definitely not what it was when I first entered. I mean, I, I you know I uh, deeply and madly fell in love with uh, that industry, the community. Uh, the craft, the manufacturing, the product, and and uh, everything else, full in total, I fell in love. You know, and uh, if you if you took a snapshot of that industry then and now, I mean, uh, I mean, you, are you a fan of rap music, Eric? You like rap music? Do you like the rap music? I like the Beastie Boys. Okay, like this is exactly. Then you'll okay. catch a vibe with this. Okay. So when I got into the game. That was like the golden era of hip hop. Right. And now it's like Panda. Mm, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the business is like some dude that's drunk on codeine, rambling about nonsense. And when I got into the game, it was like straight out of Compton. Ah, so, so now maybe I got this wrong. I was a little more under the impression that this was a little more, you know, sort of FDA driven, like, uh, it was just getting you know who the future was uncertain in the cigar industry, and so, you know, why jack around with it when I have this other business that's really rocking? But it almost sounds to me like what you're saying is the industry itself to you changed. There were multiple elements at play. You know, the FDA stuff was a, a major nail in the coffin for me. You know, um, uh, really? for the time being. You know, like I said, man, my door is always open to opportunity. I mean, I am, uh, you know, uh, the quintessential entrepreneur. I'm always chasing the best livelihood that I can make for my family, right? So if opportunity yeah. presents itself, who am I not to uh, answer the call? But for the time being, um, you know, that was a major, a major, uh, uh, stake in the chest of, of my decision making. Was, okay, so so if if uh, if the Beastie Boys was like when you got into it mm. and then it became panda panda panda. Panda, panda, panda. In a, cigar business panda. In, a, in panda. a practical sense, what about the cigar industry did you think of was becoming the panda type thing? I mean what about it didn't did, was distasteful. Have you ever examined the lyrics of Panda? Well, no. Ever? No. Oh. There, there's a know. line. There's a verse, and he says, My chopper go Oscar. 
And <laughs> I, I, I sat down with a couple friends of mine and said, we're going we're gonna to take a look at this because I'm, I'm curious. Uh, one, I always like to learn new nonsensical slang terms that I can mix into, you know, uh, proper, especially in, in like a, a meeting environment. I like to, you know, I like to drop some hotness. I like to have a very pro meeting and then say something that throws everyone else, uh, uh, you know, off their axis. It's kind of like my method, one of my methods, right? So I said, what is, what does this mean? My chopper, go Oscar. And then I said, is this like, you ever had steak Oscar? Uh, you know, is that, isn't that when they like take lobster chunks and cheese and shit like that and put it on your steak? Oh, I, yeah. You, is Matt, uh, yeah, that sounds I mean, good. Is this like one of Jesse James West Coast choppers with Oscar, like on the seat? Is that what he's talking about? The fuck does he mean, man? You're essentially doing what you just said you like to do <laughs> right now. You're like throwing out this thing that's got me off guard. I'm not Am exactly not? sure where Am this I is not? going. Am I? I thought we were better than this. How attractive do you find me, Eric? Let's be real. Let's just talk about it. On a scale of, of uh, one to, to ten? Yes. On, uh, yeah, definitely eight. You're like way up there. Why don't you ever call me, man? What's wrong with hey, Where do we let's go wrong? Go back in, let's go back in time. Let's go back in time now that we've discussed the, uh, the fall of, of your – you know, excitement with the industry. And let's go back to when you were super excited about the industry. And while I derobed this and cut it and light it, talk about this project, this cigar. Bring us back to the golden age of, of, of Boofy. Mm -hmm. and room that is the one. Of Boofy. You know, yeah. here we go. Marvin Gaye says there ain't nothing like the real thing, if you know what I'm saying. Look at this. That's a beautiful talk, thing. Talk. One of the finest cigars we ever produced under our brand name. Oh, man, let me tell you. And that I, was the result of kind of a collaborative blending session with another gentleman who's a dear friend and, and has made great strides with his own business in our industry uh, as of late. And uh, that project, in total, in total, Eric. Yeah. Oh, look at you. I'm ready, oh, you, dude. You know what? You know what, though? Did, if somebody else was on, would you have their bullshit cutter or no. like, no, no. no, you just do that. I would just do like, this. Suck it, Rocky. Here's my Sakura cutter. Exactly. Lick it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, I get it. Hi, Rock. Hi. <laughs> Love you. So, uh, where are we at with this? T tell us Look, about. That cigar is gorgeous. Hepatitis yeah. free, no gingivitis. Uh, high in vitamin C. Well, how did it come to be? What was the idea behind one shot, one kill? So uh, it was originally a tribute to, uh, at the time, uh, a gentleman I was uh, working with, the brand. Oh. And uh, oh. I sat down with another good friend of mine in the business, actually just kind of like randomly – uh, we're working together at the factory at the same time and this was actually kind of a fuck around between the two of us You know, and it was delicious. The tobacco was married. Well, uh, it aged pleasantly and uh, And then you wrapped it with the intriguing Packaging crazy that I see a lot of similar looking stuff these days, but you know, yeah. it's, maybe it's just the, where, Where's the Kermit picture that says but that's none of my business <laughs> So uh, that was really kind of uh, exercising the creative funk on all fronts, from product to packaging to even the way we delivered it and, and brought it to market was was different, you know. And, and it was and it was uh, that's when um, I really felt that I was at at my peak uh, in tobacco, you know. And the three and sizes the three that you made in this, Matt, you, you carried through on a lot of your products. Yes. No, following that, yes. I, I feel that they're phenomenal Vitolas uh, to smoke uh, while masturbating or jaywalking. And I like to keep that present in all of my, you know, cigar series. Can I speak freely here or should I censor? Or I'm, I'm confused. Um, you know, it, you, you, you should speak like you were at a business meeting in Taiwan or something. Okay, so I'm right on track then. 
<laughs> I should actually get the the melted Velveeta because I can bring that out next. Um, yeah, man. So how how is that treating you so far? Oh man, I I wish I'd have known. I would have bought so many more of these back in you the day. See when, how it works. Yeah, when we first got these, we we were blown away. But I didn't realize it was going to be such a unicorn that I sought after so often. And now I've, I think I'm down to maybe, I don't know, just a few, a few left. So, by the way, guys, the, there's a lot of, like, uh, one-shot, one-kills out there. And there's even one called the OG one-shot, one-kill. But the, these are the original, the Room 101 ones. And you can tell because of the, the, the art has the skull on there. But, man, if you see these anywhere, this is the, this is the unicorn. Want? This is the unicorn to grab. It's absolutely no. I actually was gifted an empty box with the the one I showed you earlier. Yeah. The paper are empty. That was a gift from a friend of mine because I had never actually had a box of my own. I had never owned a box of that product. I mm. actually would really like to put one in my collection uh, just for uh, just for shits, you know what I mean? But uh, right. it was made in such limited quantities that I actually never had a box. Yeah, the... Uh uh, we we always wondered like is there is there ever going to be anything else quite like this and yeah uh, there hasn't been and they they're aging marvelously so uh, by the way uh, real quick shout out to our buddy Smoke who's had a baby guys hey, hey. Had a baby so I told him that I would give him a shout out and I'm smoking this cigar in his his baby's honor tonight so uh, congrats <laughs> congrats brother so so Matt tell us. To, to the folks that might not know, uh, what is going on with you now? You're you have Room One Hundred One brand is is going along strong, but it, the focus is in the jewelry. Well, you know the Room One Hundred One brand. We've always offered multiple classes of merchandise. It's always been a lifestyle based collection. Uh, our one of our foundation elements is our accessory and jewelry collection, uh, which we continue to take. Uh, greater and greater strides with our larger scale retail partners. We actually just this Tuesday, if you follow me on the Facebook, you would have seen the first large floor standing display that we installed in the Nordstrom flagship in Seattle uh, with 20 uh, scheduled to land uh, throughout the country by the end of this year. That's and awesome. a lot of larger plans that the guys there and I have to ramp up our distribution and, and, uh, and presence in the stores. I believe, mm. uh, uh, I think 45 or 50 of their locations now carry our product. Some in varying, uh, you know, stages of, of presentation. Some have a, a, a great presentation. Some have a few pieces. It's all doing well, but the idea is to bolster the overall uh, showcase of this product. You know, so. How and would you describe the Room 101 brand jewelry? I mean, what? You said it's a, this is a lifestyle brand. What sort of lifestyle is it that you might follow if you that would make you you know sort of uh, want to be part of the Room One Hundred One brand lifestyle? What sort of lifestyle is that? Well, Room One Hundred One is revolution. Man. I started Room One Hundred One in two thousand three in my apartment off of Melrose in Hollywood with nothing, you know, uh, and I set forth to live life by my own means and my own rules, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, in my way, you know, and uh, trying to uh, do my best to break free of the day-to-day, the -day, uh, you know, um, kind of systemized grind, I guess you would say. And, uh, you know, chasing the American dream. So you get a, you're like a, it's, a, it's unique, right? It's super unique. It's different. It's hip. It's now. It's wow. It's, it's, it's it's hip now wow. It's hip now wow. I like that. Hip now wow. It's, you know, hey, uh, you know, it's the same yeah, philosophy I applied to our cigars or any other class of merchandise we would ever release. It's I refer to our style as techno retro. It's modern design and aesthetic applied to a traditionally made product. There's mm. old school heart and soul as the foundation of what we offer, with a modern twist. You know the cigar you have in your hand. A very traditional kind of cigar man's cigar enthusiast's size, right? This is not like the easiest or most uh, 
welcoming shape to like say someone that smokes uh you know uh black and miles back with somebody that just smokes little cigars to smoke something i mean this is something that the person that can truly appreciate that will sit with that for two and a half hours right. and just molest it just all up in the grill piece you know <laughs> and uh, and so i wanted to create that series in those shapes because they were artisanal shall we say and yeah. would back into the individual or the consumer that could respect that. But at the same time, we dressed them in a very fashion forward manner. We took the bones of the traditional, you know, some of those uh, were wrapped in newspaper or magazines or little reflective foil paper or whatever. And we wrapped it with this modern tattoo art style artwork, you know, and so it was techno retro. And that was true to, you know, our brand's formula as most all of our merchandise is. What sort of uh, jewelry you think I would look good in room one on one stuff? I mean, I'm not really a jewelry guy, but like, uh, you know, maybe like some sort of like, uh, you know, earring or bracelets, uh, or... leather uh, neck piece that has a, a <laughs> ring. And I will custom fashion you one, and then I will come up to the show and walk you around. A leather neck piece. Absolutely. That was the first thing that came to. You. Or leather underwear. Crocodile underwear, corduroy underwear. Could you imagine corduroy underwear, man? Would you? Okay, here's yeah. the question though. If you had corduroy underwear, would you wear them with the cords in or out? Cords in or out, Eric? In. Obviously. Into the. I like you, man. You're abrasive. <laughs> Live on the edge. Hey, you know, Matt, what? One thing this that me and you have common. Really it. One What's thing that? that me and you have common is a love of skateboarding absolutely and uh, you have a killer skateboard collection maybe you can pan around a little bit and show so, some of the guys that are watching yeah man I'm gonna try to i collect uh skateboards from the era that i got started in and i mean this is some powell stuff here some rippers yeah. um you got an original tony Hawk. that was a gift from uh Mike in Philly or Pittsburgh or wherever you're from, somewhere in Pennsylvania, you know where you are, Mike. Shout out to you. We got uh, the Caballero. This came off the uh, – and most of these are mint. Uh, wow. This came off the wall at uh, South Bay Skates, Redondo Beach. Um, can I, I don't know if you can see it. All my Stobbs. Stobb was yeah. like my, yeah. my dude. So I have his – his stuff up there. Wow, that's amazing. You got any, uh, you got any uh, Tony Alva stuff? You know, man, I don't. The Alva stuff is one uh, that I haven't collected. See, the problem with collecting is you become manic. It's like crack, and you can't stop. And so if I got <laughs> yeah. an Alva deck, then I would have to get Alva decks. And then it's yeah. just like it's, you know. You want to drown yourself in a public toilet after a while. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, at least I'm not smoking crack, but it's pretty close. What's your and most anyway, prized collection. your most prized possession? Your most prized stick? What is it? So, well, that's twofold because I have my Kevin Staub Mad Chemist here. Okay. Yeah. Right? Which was my mm -hmm. first pro deck that I ever had. Not this one. Uh, mine was destroyed, of course, from use. But that was... I, I set out to get the ones that I used. And two, two of them. One, I have kind of a, a lackluster condition one, which is a Matt Hensley H Street, um, which I'm still looking for a mint of that. And then a Jeff Kendall Adam Man Man, which I don't have. Santa Cruz, Jeff Kendall, Adam. Man. Check this out. You'll appreciate this, though. All right. Oh, that's nice. God, look at the shape of that. Sun God, mint condition, even has the sticker on it. Wow. You get this stuff. Where do you get this stuff usually? Is it just off of well, so eBay or what? Uh, eBay... Uh, trolling the internet, there are forums for, you know, 
any flavor of weirdness you could ever dream of on the internet, as you know, and, and skateboard collecting is one of those. Um, and there, you know, our Facebook groups and, and all that shit. So what you, what year was like the height of your, you know, when you were the best skateboarder that you were, you know, was this like uh, late eighties or mid eighties or. Oh no, man. The best skateboarder I've been is now. Really? Yeah, because wow. I started skating again, I want to say a year and a half ago. And so I've just been yeah. trying to nail new shit, and it's just a different – because now I'm encroaching 40, and I no longer care about my physical well-being. You know, when I was a kid, I was scared <laughs> to try things, and now I'm just like, just give me an excuse. Just bring the pain, you know? So, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm uh, more solid on the board now, you know? So – um it's like therapy that's, that's, for me man. you know that's sort of the opposite of me i think uh back then like i was skating in 83 mm -hmm. 82 86 ish that kind of those years right and and now i'm paying for that you know correct i pay i pay for that when i wake up in the morning correct no i get that man but you would be you know, if you got back on, man, I mean, the, the main difference I, I notice is like the gear has changed, the shape of the boards is different, and they're so much easier to use, man. You know, right. there was all this really cool extra stuff you would put on them from tail guards and nose guards and risers and all this stuff, and now it's like you put the trucks on it, it's a shape that it doesn't matter what direction you land on it, and you just go. And it's more because now they're like they're the skateboards today are like just disposable, you know. We yeah. back in our day, you know, you you'd spend that money and you put all the guards on it because you wanted it to last for a while, yeah. you know. And now the key is just destruction. Like just you destroy. just have to destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who do you think was the if 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 I had to say, hey, you could go back and skate with anybody from any era? Oh, wow. You know, who 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 would you go back and skate with? If in the prime, like in your opinion, who is like, you know, the guy you really looked up to? Well, there, said, I mean, look, man, there were several, uh, but you know, I was never a vert skater because just simply couldn't afford to build a, a ramp like that, you know. So I skated in, in, you know, street and you know, under freeway overpasses and shit like that. So the guy that I would. Uh, follow, I think, or want to skate with would be Matt Hensley, man. I think he took, he was one of the guys that was responsible for street skating to really uh, be taken to the next level, you know. He did, he's like, okay, Matt Hensley is Pete Johnson, right? Because the boutique cigar game is Pete Johnson's fault. I always tell him that, right? <laughs> I'm like, you know that shit's your fault, right? You know this is your fault. He's like, shut up. So, Matt Hensley's Pete Johnson, and then the people that followed him were able to build on his form. And, and, and other guys, you know, not just him, but guys at that yeah. time. But he was really raw. And uh, do you, my son is like destroying something back there. It's, I don't That's know. Right. It's, okay. Right. Destruction. So, uh, you know, I think that I, but that would be my guy for sure. I think uh, even though, even though I was more of a street skater too, ditches and, and park benches and all that kind of stuff. I still think, in my opinion, if I had to go back, if I could go back in time and skate with somebody, it'd probably be Stevie Caballero. I mean, I don't know, something about him just yeah. it was cool, man. I mean, everybody wanted yeah. to be like Stevie Caballero, you know? You still could, man. That dude skates all the time. Like, do you follow him on Instagram? Do you follow any of those guys? Not really. I've sort of fallen out of the. I've sort of fallen out of the game. Don't be a bitch. It's never too late. Just fucking <laughs> hit follow. On Instagram, five guys, you'll be sucked back in, and you're yeah. going to be breaking your ankle in no time. It'll be amazing. I'll be spending thousands of dollars like you on boards, man. No, man, don't get trapped. Don't get trapped in that. I've actually decided to chill on that. So I got to sell some of my stuff, get the stuff that I really started collecting for, and then and then button it up, you know, because yeah. it got crazy for a minute, as you can kind of see. Hey, uh, if you're watching this and you want me to ask Matt a question, just post it on the dojo with hashtag AskDojo. There's a few questions already, and I'll get to those audience questions probably next. Hmm. So my last question to you, Matt, 
before we go on is uh, what skate bands, like for me, to me, <sighs> Agent Orange is the ultimate <laughs> skate band. I mean, that was like my era, you know, everything turned yeah. gray, bloodstains, all that. What about you? What was like? What was what was the thing that you would just get you going, fired up? So, so although many of the kids out there would not remember this, I recall a day and age when there was a small, large postage stamp size advert in the back of every Thrasher magazine for Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh wow! So okay. you know, back then their music was a lot more. Uh, raw. I mean, they, they've blossomed phenomenally as, I mean, they're exquisite musicians, um, but they were far more aggressive and gnarly and, and raw yeah. at that time. And, and that was very good skate music. I liked a lot of rap music then, you know? So I, I was also into a lot of that shit at the time. Run DMC back in the day, probably. I liked Run DMC, man. I liked Run DMC, of course, and Houdini and all that stuff from New York. And then, uh, and then I got into like the West Coast hip hop when it first came out, you know, and, and uh, I still like it. Still listen to it. You know, you ought to get into collecting like old school original vans. I had a pair. I had a pair of vans that were modeled. They looked like Air Jordans. They don't make them anymore. But they, right. were, made, they were made by vans there for skateboarding. And they, but they look like a pair of original Air Jordans. There's some cool old tennies, man. I mean. That's uh, the cease and desist model from vans. Uh, okay, yeah, see? Nike said, no, no, no. No, no. <laughs> Dude, so I have a friend that, that built a uh, – he, he's also a, 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 a radicalized American entrepreneur, savage hustler, very cool guy, very dear friend. And his first business, he sold sneakers, collectible sneakers and Jordans. And so we were talking about sneakers uh, over a cigar. And he – this is very intriguing. This is very intriguing. He told me yeah. that if you had in your possession an original pair of Jordans, box and everything, they're worth 30 Gs. Wow. Collectors pay 30 grand for an original pair of Jordans now. That is insane. That's a good investment. See, now we just need to know what to collect right now that exactly. in 20 years will be worth 30 grand, right? It's exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. It's whatever that item is for kids right now. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I, I long for those days of middle of summer, just skateboarding all day at some ditch somewhere, you know, and and just not a care in the world. It's it's sort of like cigars are for me today. Like there's a kind of right. a connection, right? I mean, you, you have a cigar, you know you're going to be with your friends. You're going to have four hours where you don't got to think about politics or bills or anything else. A lot of that is the same with skateboarding. It's an escape. I agree. I agree, man. I highly encourage you to to do it. Just well, do it. Every now and then I hop back on the board just to show the kids that I can actually still carve the street, you know. I can still skate, you know, but. Of course you can. I, I got to get back in shape, you know. Back in the day, I, I moved to California. I was going to be a professional skateboarder. Skate right. With uh, Jesse Martinez and Christian Hasoy and. Mark Gator Rogowski, but you know what? I wasn't very good, so that was. Well, this is the this is the thing. I wasn't like, good I, you know, the parks I would go to in LA, I go every morning, uh, and I would go, you know, six seven o'clock, skate for two hours, and then go do my day. And you know, kids that would show up, every one of them would have been a professional skateboarder when I was growing up. Right. Because dickheads like you and I put their kids <laughs> on a board when they're four years old and, you know, they have new, this new gear and it's all this. So it's like they're doing crazy tricks, man. Crazy tricks. Yeah, it's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, Matt, I got some audience questions for yes. you. Yes. I got some audience questions for you. No, I do not have free tickets to the donkey show. I'm just going to put that out there if that's a question. So we know that. That okay. I have to X that. That was okay, the there. We go. Yeah, see, I know. Take your little old crayon and, and you know X that out. All right. I knew uh, it. I knew it. I knew besides it. that question, um, yes. Uh, Melissa wants to know what are some of the differences and similarities between the jewelry business and the cigar business. Ah, that's actually a great question, Melissa. Thank you for asking it. Accolades, accolades, accolades. So 
one of the reasons I first fell in love with the cigar business, I remember the first time I walked through a cigar factory and I was imagining myself walking through my production facility in Los Angeles, our, our jewelry manufacturing factory, because although the end use of these products, I should text you a nude right now. I see you checking your phone. I'm looking at the questions. They're coming Dude, in. They're flooding in. Quicker, than, I will send it to you so fast, Eric. Uh, you, you, Wait, I don't have your number. You need to send me your number, bro. <laughs> we got to get this party started. So, so I'm scared. What? <laughs> what did you say? I said I'm scared. Oh, I thought you said I'm married. I was going to be like, bitch, you're the cigar business. <laughs> that too. <laughs> dicks, dicks, dicks. I mean, it's just, it's just, just crazy. Just, oh, you know. Okay, so I fell in love with the fact that I felt immediately a connection to the product being uh, that I – was just being introduced to the production uh, and manufacturing process. However, it was uh, handmade art that these people were manufacturing. Wow. And no two are ever exactly the same. And this is exactly the same as uh, silver uh, jewelry production. Mm. You know, you, you have molds, you have molds for cigars, you have molds for your jewelry product, but no two are exactly the same. It's impossible because it is a, uh, uh, a, an uncontrollable set of circumstances that create these final finished products, right? I mean, it's controllable to a point. You harness this process, but a cigar, you might have uh, a tinge more of one component than another in your right. bunch, and it's different, or, you know, there's a myriad of things that can go on with that product, right? And it's the same with the jewelry process. So uh, there were a lot of similarities, although... The end result is, you know, you have a piece that you would uh, put on your body somewhere or in your body or whatever you're going to do with it and, and wear it. And the other one you incinerate and ingest and taste, you know, I mean, you can lick the jewelry you're wearing and taste something, but this is different and it's yeah. not advised, right? No, right? I don't advise this. No. Uh, of course, unless you're buying something from me and this is what you want to buy it for and you're paying me monetary units. I prefer the pound. Thank you. Uh, can you scroll my bank details on the screen, by the way? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You get What's to be that? creative, right? You get to be creative. In of both course. Ends. Of course. And, and cigars were – cigars actually one of the differences, although the, the core of this lustable factor is the same, uh, but the scale in which – I was able to exercise creativity on the cigar platform was formal grand because you had a box, a huge surface. You know, I had been designing things that were this big, you know, for years and trying to balance and uh, make sure they sat correctly. And, and, you know, all, all the different, all the different components of design being fed into this one piece. And I had something to me that was the size of a billboard that I could put designs on, you know, mm. Uh, and, and it, and it was really, uh, that was another thing that was, was uh, very intriguing and at the same time different. Right. Um, and it was about the craft of making the products, correct? That was the question. Yeah. I got yeah. sidetracked when I started talking about yeah, all the dicks. Anyway, anyway. Hey, yeah. uh, hey uh, uh, Ghost Shadow says, keep shredding. So no, not a question, not but, uh, he's, my into, man. he's into it. Um, Perfect. Emochos asks, thank you for your service in the military. What made Thanks, you man. enlist and what was your job and how many years did you serve? Jeez. Okay. So that. I'll answer this very quickly. Okay. Uh, I served four years in the Marine Corps infantry as a machine gun. And I was in a, a line company. Uh, for those that know or don't know, there are line companies and weapons companies in uh, in each battalion, the weapons companies man the heavier guns, like the 50 cal machine guns and the Mark 19 grenade launchers and yada yada. And each one of these weapon systems has a, a let's call it a baby brother or a little cousin, right? And whereas these guys got to drive in vehicles for miles because their weapons were heavier, we got to carry 
all that shit for miles. I was very upset as a young man. I was highly upset. However, uh, yeah, uh, four years, uh, three, seven India company was my unit. We were based in 29 Palms. And the reason why uh, I joined, um, uh, at the time I was not living such a positive uh, life and I needed a vicious rearrangement of my life. And I okay. said, you know what? I must recalibrate my entire being. And where else can I go to do that? The United States Marine Corps. Later, I polled uh, my friends in my platoon. I asked them the same question. I said, you know, you, this was a couple of years. And I said, guys, you know, I, I just quick question, but why did you do this? <laughs> you know, why, why did you choose to do this? And every one of them had the same answer, which I happened to strike a chord with me. They said, I don't know, Booth. I just said, fuck it. And there we were, you know, so that's why, yeah. you know, it was, but it was, it was, uh, I am, it is something that I'm very glad that I did. Uh, you and I would not be sitting here having this conversation had I not done that. And uh, it just, it was my path, man. And so uh, I think I answered that thoroughly. Yeah. I even gave extra morsels. I appreciate your service as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, man. Brad from Tampa wants to know what you thought of Rodney Mullen. Big Brad, Rodney Mullen is an amazing extraterrestrial being that <laughs> is brilliant in both person and his skill sets. I there actually has Brad has Big Brad seen the video that was recently it's like the first time he's allowed himself to be filmed in like X amount of years. I think it was Esquire magazine that filmed uh you might want to look it up, but it's just him, this shadow lit kind of concrete space. Everything's black around him. There's a light coming down on him. And he's just, it's just like three straight minutes of him doing his Thanks. alien level magic. He's amazing. He's amazing. He is amazing. In fact, I remember back in the day, we, we thought the freestyle guys were nerdy. You know, they wore the short shorts and, and right. Stuff. But then he was the only guy that could trans, he transitioned from that into being really, really cool. I don't know. He reinvented himself, mm -hmm. and then we ended up thinking he was super cool after a while. But in the early days, you know, guys like us thought those guys were nerds. But then it all kind of melded together. That's true. And now they're freestyle guys. Like, there's a kid that uh, I found him on Instagram. I just sent him a bunch of free shit, like, uh, because I just liked what he was doing. You know, it's a young Canadian kid. His name's Jordan Sterling, you know? And uh, – I just I messaged him and said, "Man, I really like your style. I like what you're doing, and and uh, I want to send you some some product, uh, you know." And so they every once in a while give us shout outs in their posts and whatever. But he's a freestyle skater. He's brilliant, and uh, the freestyle guys are no longer the you know the uh, the short short nerdy dudes that we you know. They're now like it's it's really cool what they're doing, man. Yeah. All right, uh, this question comes from Greg. And he What's wants, up, Greg? He wants to know uh, what would be your go-to cigar now that you're not you, – you know, you don't have, you're, the brand is gone, the cigar brand. What's your go-to cigar these days? What are you liking? Well, look, man, tried and true. Uh, my favorite has been, was, and is Padron 64 Anniversary. Prince of Pace size, natural wrapper, and suck my dick. That is one of the best cigars out there. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. the natural wrapper too. I'm glad you said that. So many people gravitate towards the Maduro, but man, their natural is oh, man. as amazing in my opinion too. I agree. If I bumped it up to a larger size, I would be tempted to dabble into the darker wrapper, but that cigar in that shape is, if I had one cigar to smoke that would just be the cigar I smoked uh, into perpetuity, it would be that cigar. All right, this one comes from uh, Juan Cancel. No! And what? Uh, he wants to know if you, have a, all. if you have a reality TV show in the works. Yes, it's called Matt Booth, 
marries Juan Cancel in Mykonos at a toga party. <laughs> I know it's a long title, but visually, I'm sure you see that picture. Oh, and yeah. It will smoke protocol cigars and, uh, uh, you know, wear some, he'll wear some sort of interesting toga that's fashioned out of the clippings of his Port Authority uniform. I'll do some like weird, like Rick Owens, uh, saffron tunic kind of thing. And we'll just be, and then we'll come back. Then we'll come back one and you and I will drop the industry's first life partner collaborative cigar. Wow. All the, all the marketing imagery, you and me holding hands, barbecuing together, like, being very sweet to it, cigars, crossing the arms with the cigars, the whole thing, you and me want. I love you, man. <laughs> one of the first one of the first guys I met as I started to travel and, you know, diddle myself around in the industry. Yeah, Juan's a great guy. In fact, in Nicaragua, we got to drink a, uh, what was it called, Jordan? A Cuba Riqueña Libre. A Cuba Riqueña Libre. Oh, a Cuba Libre, except for Juan stirs it with his pinky finger. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And we all got sick. I, I would have stirred it with another. We all got sick right after that, so I'm not sure if that's a good idea to ever try that again. But um, all right, this next question, I don't want. I'm going to change the subject because uh, this next question comes from uh, Wate88. He says, "I read before there was going to be a third cigar in the uh, uh, Johnny Tobacco Knot." Uh, Chief Calero line. Yes. Uh, will that ever happen now? Hey, man. You know, uh, it ain't over till it's over, right? You never know. Okay. I, mean, I might just fuck around and do something. Who knows? But yeah. as of right now, this is no. As we sit right now. As this is no. But maybe yes. You never know. But no. <laughs> but maybe yes. <laughs> All right, this, uh, <laughs> this is the last audience question. Uh, this comes from Donald S. Donald S. He wants to know uh, who gave you the nickname Boofy. So this actually came to be originally in the Marine Corps. Guys called me Boof, and then it just metastasized into Boofy. So, uh, and then my... Uh, beloved extraterrestrial concubine of a woman uh, started using the phrase it's Boofy Baby as a yeah. tribute to Bootsy Collins, right? Okay. And, uh, and then it just kind of took off from there. Then several years later I am in uh, outside of Pittsburgh at a fine cigar establishment, Leaning House Cigars my man Dave holding it down out there, one of my favorite shops and I'm told by some of the local consumers that in there, as we know, slang, uh, you know, changes East Coast, West Coast, all this is words here and there, and it's different. So in those parts, if you boof something, you uh, hide it in your anus so the popo don't find it. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, Juan Cancel. It's just it's, it's abbreviated. It's not uh, disrespectful. So, so my nickname was actually the same term used for hiding shit in your ass before you go to the joint. And by the way, shout out to the guys that do that, man, because I had a friend that was going away and he had this bag of tobacco and one of these little mini bics and he's like, Booth, I gotta take this in there because I can, you know, trade for stuff or, you know, and I was like, and he's like, I can't do it. I'm like, give me that fucking lighter, man. I'll stick that in my ass. And then it's like, it's very difficult uh, to do that. And um, I, I remember that just thinking, wow, this is obscure and, and, and violently uh, difficult. And I, I don't like this. I do not like this. And yeah. so I never tried it again. Right. I'm just saying shout out to the guys that can do it. Because, I mean, wow. All right. So, uh, Donald, uh, thanks for that question, Donald. <laughs> thanks a lot for that question. What a, what a stash Ooh. spot. I mean. All right. Hey, this la uh, we got two last segments to go. Just a little bit. The, the next person. segment is called The World According to Matt Booth. Are you ready for Ooh. this? Yeah. This, I'm going to show you like, um, you know, three or four items. <laughs> and you're right. going to just comment on them. And that this will give us a, a sneak peek into your, uh, into your, you know, the mind of Matt Booth. All right. Okay. All right. The first one is uh, the unicorn frappuccino. What, what does that bring to your mind? Uh, you know, 
I would like to think that if I grazed my nostrils atop that uh, sparkling, seemingly effervescent, creamy, delightful uh, uh, vessel of some sort of bastardized coffee drink, I would, I would be inundated with with sensations of grand uh, <laughs> zest and the 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 flavors and the and the taste cascading through my nasal passages, beckoning me to uh, then sip. Just, just come forth towards the 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 the, the green Mag shaft sticking from the top, and that I would then then draw some of it into my mouth, and I would then this explosion and this, the fla flavor. Yeah, you, need to, you need to post that review on Yelp. <laughs> How big is that? Do you think we could boof that? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. How, what about robots? Do, do, do robots intimidate you? Are you are you worried that? Uh, Robots will soon take over your job. You know, I hope that robots take over my job because I'd like to kick it. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's is that wrong? Am I wrong? No, yeah. And I just kick back. Can we build them with obscurely large butts? <laughs> so I have something to look at while they're working. Probably, you know what I'm saying? Probably. Can we do that? So, so you're actually excited about the prospect of robots, you know, Making it easier on our lives. I, I agree. All no, right. man, I'm not. This is the beginning of – this is T2, man. The machines. <laughs> you can't fuck with that. Whoever's doing that should stop. Like okay. if we can cycle things back to 1950 when America actually had some stones and some manufacturing <laughs> power and, you know, we weren't at the dawn of the fucking machines taking over, I mean, it might be cool. Of right. course – you know, I mean, and look, and no, look, bro, no AIDS, right? What? <laughs> right? I mean, 1950, ain't nobody had AIDS, man. Nobody had AIDS in 1950. All right. That's How nice. about... Uh, like, you can go out to the club and meet somebody and think, I mean, you know, I could roll the dice on this, have unprotected sex, and the worst that's going to happen isn't going to kill me violently. Right? I mean, is, uh, are we off topic? Yeah. All right. How about... um? <laughs> How about, no, the, like how about the, uh, Dr. Dr. David Dow getting dragged off the United? Has that ever, you travel a lot? I do. Have you ever been? That happens to me at least a, once a week. Have you ever been dragged off of an airplane like that? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the thing I like about these photos is his exposed underbelly. Uh, <laughs> the Velociraptor in me wants to strike at it every time I see it. Just, I can't just gnash down on it, you know. He said he ended up with like broken teeth and a broken nose. Do you think he like you know like smashed his face in the bathroom or something just so he could sue or what? You know, I, I would be curious to see how that all turns out. You know. Yeah, and I um, think he I think he got a big settlement because I am diligently taking notes on how I can also get paid. <laughs> well, there you go, man. I you know, you know, you know what's funny? Uh, like. We had built these custom display cases for store ba way back in the day, and they're all made out of sheet metal. And uh, the gentleman that built them was was built them was European, because that's sexy, right? It's for European builds them. And you know, he built them, and and uh, we put them into a store, and and the store owner called me. These are like six and a half feet tall, right? But they had an exposed metal rim at, at the very top. And the store owner called me and said, "Hey, uh, is there any way we could?" somehow cover this because someone is going to get up on their tiptoes, reach up there, cut themselves and sue us. And I relayed this information to the Euro that built them. And uh, he said, you know, I would have never thought of that because if someone did that in Europe, the people in the store would look at them and say, what are you doing, dummy? <laughs> but here that would be rewarded. Right? So, I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, I guess it's time to get paid. I, I don't know what to say. I, I to, say. You're saying we have a, 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 a justice system gone mad. I'm just going to say that I could not fit a small Bic lighter into my anus. No, that's, that's yeah. what I'm going to say. And, I, and I, I haven't thought about that for a while, but when you ask me about the nickname, then it, you know, it's, it's cyclical. It spawns other thought thoughts and, and things and that might get you that might get you picked off a plane well you know um 
Yeah, I mean, we, you know, you don't know until you try. All right, how That's about uh, how about this uh, this this monkey that they call Uncle Fatty in Thailand, who just sits around and and uh, you go to you go to uh, Asia quite a bit. Have you have you ever seen a, a monkey like this? Check this. Check I mean, I, this is like he's an internet uh, sensation, Matt. It, it's like I'm at a cigar event. I, I don't know what else to say about this. <laughs> You know, I, I was going to tell you through this whole thing, I, I wasn't hard. Like I hadn't achieved an, ere an erection. And now, I mean, it's just throttling. So, I mean, this is something oh, of intrigue. Oh, help me. Um, what about these, uh, what about uh, $425 pre-muddy pants? How do you feel about that? You know, if I'm selling them, great. If I'm buying them, horrid. How about that? <laughs> and that, my friends... Is the world? Is that doo doo? That was doo doo on that guy's pants. That wasn't according even. According to Matt Booth, and so now you get a peek into his mind, and I apologize for getting that peek into his mind. <laughs> you should. <laughs> you should actually. It was absolutely horrifying, and we're all going to need counseling after the show. Matt, it's already been an hour, but we haven't picked our winners yet. Are you ready to help me pick the winners of the Win Pigs Fly contest? I am so ready. Okay, so here I'm was so the ready. contest. The contest was, what would you do to win a box of flying feral pigs? And uh, the Drew Estate flying feral pig, this is the uh, Liga Unico Siri, a great cigar, uh, provided by Payless Cigars and Pipes. So hey. we've got it down to about 14 finalists. Okay. And I'm going to show them to you, and I'm going to let you pick the winner so you have a lot of power in your hands right now. Are you ready for this challenge? Is Juan Cancel still watching? I can't do this if Juan's not watching right now. Yeah, I'm sure he is. He watches. You all can the tell. Time. All right, here we go. Let's start with. Um, Are you lying to me? Let's start with the first entry. Okay. It comes from uh, BB. He says, "I'd I'd lick this diaper blow off blow out off my wife's uh, shirt in front of everybody in the Target parking lot for a box of." Feral flying pigs. So that's a pretty, uh, I don't know. Yeah. A testament to the level of fanatic dedication to the Drew Estate brand and the Liga Pravada product. You, sir, BB, would lick baby doo doo. <laughs> I like it. It's yeah. strong. I'm going to make notes. Can I make notes? Should I be yeah, making make notes? Yeah, make BB notes. Make notes. I'll also doo -doo. show you uh, all of them together at the end. But yeah, make notes. Okay, BB's got the comes doo -doo. from our good friend Brad from Tampa. He ah. says, "I would turn my wife's pet pig into a frying pig." Very clever, Brad. By the way, I like to play on words, but because there's no talk of any form of penetration or other type of depraved activity with the pig, I am less than aroused by this. That was supposed to be a miniature pig, but they fed it and it got big. <laughs> I, All right, uh, let's I feel like you talk a, over a lot of the comments I make. Like you don't want me to be saying them, but you can't help it because it's already come out of my mouth. Is that what's going on here? Check Do we trust out. each other? <laughs> Check this one out from Emocho. He says, You're we, doing it again. we all heard the story on the news. Wait, who's in the – look at that. Look now at that. Let's see from Mr. Booth's side. So here, there you go. There's Dr. Uh, David Dow getting dragged off next to you in a pig. That's phenomenal. That's good, right? I like this. I like whoever. Okay, make, make your note. Make your note. I like this. I, I like this. This is creative, and this is also tying me to strange acts and activities. You know, I, I like this. I like where this is at. By okay. the way, uh, Juan Cancel just messaged us and said he's watching. So. Good. All right. Good. I now have the confidence to continue. All right. So uh, Jermaine says, "I'd tell my oh. wife about my secret cigar." buying account Ooh, no bro no, no man don't do it don't <laughs> do that man look, look it's, the, i know it's tempting but you can get the pigs later man. yeah Just don't, yeah don't you, yeah exactly you out your that's a bad idea bro i'm telling uh, you james l says uh that he would uh, watch a weekend of lifetime movies with his wife he'd also cry drink and uh oh drink uh camille Cam Camom how do you say that Cam camille Chamomile tea and wear a snuggie. That's that's commitment right there. James coming in strong with that mm. one, man. Coming on and a picture you. of Boons, which I dev sampled. You time. probably drank that in high school. I, I drank that last Wednesday. Yeah. 
Uh, Malmo says, for a box of uh, feral flying pigs, I would listen to a full discography of Kanye West. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't know. To echo my sentiments prior about the golden age of hip-hop and what's going on now, Malmo is uh, holding his own feet to the fire, so to speak. <laughs> All right? <laughs> strong. Strong. Very strong. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mark S. says, for a box of feral pigs, he, he'd trade, and by the way, he has a Porsche. He showed yeah. pictures of it. He'd trade his Porsche for this Cherry Classic AMC Pacer. That was one of the most amazing cars of all time. Wouldn't you agree? I, uh, I quite frankly, would like to have that car. I don't know what I'd do with it, but I, I, would, uh, I would gladly own that car. Ranks right up there with the uh, Pontiac Aztec. Don't ever mention that car to me again as long as you have. <laughs> don't uh, ever, don't you ever mention uh, the Pontiac Aztec. What a, what a, oh, just, <laughs> God, what a horrid, horrid. Like they sat around and said, hey, uh, boss, here's our idea for this pile of shit on wheels that's uh, <laughs> the color of baby uh, feces. Uh, do you like this? And they're like, Rocket, let's let's go for that. Like that's that's like a bunch of drunk guys saying we're gonna you know we're gonna do this obstacle in the parking lot tonight two a.m. drunk out of our minds. This is what we're gonna do. This is a good idea. Were they under the influence? I think so. How about um how about M Bright? He said he'd slap his mama for a uh, league of uh, M Bright. I don't think I'm hot with that. I think his mama would slap back. What do you think? You know, I kind of feel like now. Look, I I don't want to, I don't want to make any implications here, but I notice that there is a cigar in Mama Bright's hand. Yeah, and I almost feel like there's some collusion here. All right, I don't know that this would be an authentic. Uh, yeah. You know, what did the five fingers say to the face? I think this would be more like take one for the team, and we'll split the box. And I don't know if that's fair. How about, how about this? If he goes downtown tonight and stabs a hobo in the abdomen, then, then that's now, we'll, now we're talking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's second level stuff. But this is a good one. I like that one. How about uh, Nathan W? Uh, good God, man. For the pigs, I would let my kids roast me like a pig. How, have these people been to our cigar events before? How are they coming up with these images? <laughs> I like the fact that he got his family involved. You know, that's always, that's a plus. Yeah. And look, they're using a, a lawn rake to secure his feet. And like, yeah. this is well, this is well structured here. Well structured. Very good. Yeah. It's artistic. All right. This was just a, a text one. Uh, no picture. But uh, Paul S. says, I would dig up my, I would dig up my dead mother-in-law reanimate her smelly carcass. I would then sit in the same room listening to her sar sarcastic lectures for the rest of my now pathetic life. Wow, that's uh, dark. Paul, there are people uh, out there that you can talk to. I just <laughs> want you to know that. I care about you. Uh, the Cigar Dojo cares about you. And, uh, you know, this is a testament to the bewildering level of, uh, well, to the atrocities people will commit for cigars. Yeah. yeah. All right, Paul. So that's quite an entry. Let's move on to uh, Shiny Prophet. He says, uh, I would make this guinea pig fly, although I received a strong disapproval from my daughter. See, he's, you know, that's just, that's cruel. Why is there a, is that a boat? It looks like a toy Should, boat. Shouldn't that have been a plane? Or is he just going to throw it in the boat? I think he's just going to literally just throw it out the window. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, right, we've, got, we've got we've got to tick the box for animal cruelty. We're covering all. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> this is a Tampa Dojo. He says I'd share ooh. this car with this fella oh. with some pigs. Oh, oh! <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. That's. But you could have got that in the '50s. I bet. That's you know, horrific. Could have got that in the '50s. All right. So good job, Tampa Bob. I think. That, I think. Um, uh, this one's this one's Alpha Tech. He says I'd steal a donut from a cop and lead them on a high speed chase for a box of flying pigs. So that's, this guy's wild, man. I like him. You know, hey, that's and he's wearing like a very 
athletic kind of hoodie deal, yeah. although that's a different guy, I think. And I like the, the kid getting chased by the – Yeah, Photoshop like is – you know, that's good. Uh, and then we got Donald S. He would take a ramen noodle bath with Matt Booth. This is the final entry God, man. for some feral flying pigs. So what do you think of that? Um, I'm going to print that out and have my way with myself tonight. <laughs> All right, Matt. So there we go. Now, these are, I know these are small. <laughs> you're ignoring well, my words, man. My, I'm saying my words, and you're not. I'm not ignoring your words. I'm trying to keep the show moving. We have a, we have a strict time limit. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm just trying to keep, you know, the, from getting too wacky here. But uh, so there we go, 14 entries. I'm going to give you some time to think about those. What are some of your thoughts on those as you peruse them? Well, we got the, you know, both taunting and running from the law. We've got the baby doo-doo. We've got the pig that we're apparently not going to uh, fillet or uh, penetrate. We've got the pig on the plane with, I like that whole one. That's very, I like that. I like the way that was done. And then I like I also like that they cut me out of like one of our press photos. <laughs> and I was uh, like just in the cut right there with the pig and the uh uh but I mean I, I passenger, I don't even know what we should say about that uh in public. Uh we've got was it Jermaine W? Was that it? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. With, with yeah. The very, very bad idea to out himself yeah, uh, yeah. over a box. Uh, but, I, but I respect the level of uh, fanaticism and dedication. Right. Boone's Farm scores two points for me uh, just on Boone's Farm alone. Oh, yeah. Um, the Kanye thing, I get. You make a very strong point. It's valid. Yeah. And, and it's uh, heartfelt. Mm -hmm. I get. Uh, the car thing. I also understand the the colluding with the am I are we really slapping mom are we <laughs> if he Facebook lives him stabbing a hobo okay then he wins I don't know how fast he can pull that together and that might be illegal and we'd probably go to jail too Matt <laughs> yeah I would just like to say I'm not suggesting that he should actually do that. I'm saying it only for effect. Yeah, I, I discourage that strongly. I'm saying that only for effect. Uh, I, I have good friends that are hoping. Not the droids you're looking for. Uh, the stunts conducted during the Cigar Dojo were done by professionals. Right. And should not be attempted at home. Uh, the God, the... What is... I mean... The gonocephalus Oof, yeah. Just, just, I mean, it makes you want to take a belt sander to those lips. Just get it off. It's terrible, right? Wow. And then you've got uh, you and then Donald in a uh, ramen so bag. Amazing. It's so amazing. It really is. That's really great, man. I, I love it. I love it. Donald is, so do I just choose this? Do I just select this? You just pick one and they win it. They're the grand prize winner, man. They go home happy as a lark. Now, I have to give Donald an honorable mention because it's phenomenal. It's. It, I hope we can recreate this scene at Thanksgiving <laughs> or one of these other fine holiday evolutions of one of our opponents. I, I have a large tub here, actually. We can mm -hmm. you. and you're more than welcome. Uh, <laughs> but I must delve deeper. I must delve deeper into the creativity uh, of the Doja Knights. Do, they, do you call your listeners Doja Knights? Uh, Dojo uh, Nation. But you can call them whatever you like. I'll call them Doja. How about I call them Doja Knights? Okay. You, All right. You know, I, you, you don't even take me. I don't even know why you have me on, man. You talk over what I say. You don't care. <laughs> We're going to go. Damn, man, the baby doo doo is strong, though, man. It's, it's, it's talking about eating feces, man. I mean, there are people, like, if he did that and videotaped it, there are many businessmen uh, from <clears throat> other countries and some here that would pay good money for that video. I mean, it's uh, um, uncanny. But I just, I ingesting the doo doo, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know about that. I do like the slap in his mama one. I do like that. But I keep coming back to the authenticity. Is it real, man? Or are they partnering on some scheme to get this product, man? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. But, you know, hey. Eric, are you wearing pants right now? It's a pretty, yes. It's a pretty, it's a pretty authentic looking shot. I mean, it looks, it looks like she's, she's even. No, man, she's very casual about it. She's like, ha ha, split the box with him. Ha ha. <laughs> That's what that kind of looks like, kind of. But then again, that could be at one specific moment, and then the smack just comes. It's like that's the the crescendo of the contact right there, you know? And then you got Nathan getting barbecued. That's, that took some setup. Damn, man. And it can only be one? It can only be one. It can only be one. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no participation trophies on the dojo, Matt. We go we go all in. It's just you know, grand champ or nothing. We're going barbecue. Barbecue. We're going barbecue. Yeah, it's strong, man. And right, let's, let's backtrack. No shirt. It's erotic. Let's backtrack. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Nathan and W. He's got a, an apple in his mouth. The dude went all out for this. Nathan W. Congratulations. Did they actually roast him though? I think so. I'm pretty sure. It's over. So the kids are going to get the cigars. The kids will get the cigars. I'm sure. I'm, are 18, I'm, of course. He will them to them. Yeah. Okay. Well. So, uh, by the way, thanks for everybody that entered. There was a ton of entries. Uh, needless to say, some of them I didn't even understand. I have to admit, I went through. I literally looked at every entry. Uh, a couple of times, and there was a few I didn't even understand, but there was some great ones, so thanks for everybody participating. Mm. Uh, dojo people go all out, right? Matt, remember the last uh, the ramen episode? Look, man, they, and that was an episode Yeah, in, in many ways, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the Dojo Knights are, they're plugged in, man. Yeah. I respect the community. Although I tried to uh, post an emoji of the 100 on your app, and it did not accept my emoji. Mm. So, uh, loss of points, bro. <laughs> but still, your guys are guys and gals are super plugged in, super tight. They ask great questions. They they clearly care, man. And uh, always been one of my favorite organiza organizations there, sir. Well, I appreciate that. And you've always been one of our favorite uh, guys in the industry. We're sad that you're not around, but you're still around. Where can dojo people, dojo night? I'm around, baby. Where can Doja Knights follow Matt Booth? Where, what are we going to see from you in the next year or so? Give us a little future update before we say goodbye. You know what, Eric? I have various projects in multiple stages of development. Oh. That's what I'll say. Nice. You'll catch me live and direct on at Room 101 Brand on the Instagram. Uh, you can... If I actually have space, you can hit me up on Facebook and follow me there. I, I try to, uh, when we're not topped off on people, I try to link up with whoever I can in the brand pages on Facebook and whatnot. Okay. Room101brand.com, you can see all of my most current works. Right. And that's about that. Well, that's awesome, man. Hey, hey, thanks. Hit me for up on Tinder. What's that? <laughs> hit me up on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll swipe. What is it? Left? Right? I think that's a different app, bro. Oh. Well, I'm hey, not man. sure. I, I don't know. Uh, thanks for taking time on this Friday night to be with us. It was a, a very, very entertaining show. We appreciated every second of it. You know, it's my honor. It's my honor, man. I just appreciate you having me on. Good looking out. All right. So there he is, that Matt Booth, ladies and gentlemen. How about that show? Uh, we we did it. Uh, I think it was even crazy. Maybe possibly, you know, if, if last show was a ten, this might have been an eleven. He cranked it up to eleven. He cranked it up to eleven. And uh, by the way, we're just getting started on the dojo tonight. It's unicorn night. We want to see your unicorns that you're smoking. And by the way, somebody asked earlier, what's a unicorn cigar? That's just something that you can't get anymore. So when you smoke it, it's gone for good. Something rare, something not in production. 
and that's what makes it fun. We'll do some now playing later. We'll drink some beer and some bourbon, have a good time. I want to thank Matt Booth from uh, Room 101 Brand. Look for him on all of the channels. The channels, man. And everybody, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Matt. Thank and you, guys. Method. Take care. All right. Watch remember, yourself. never smoke alone. Never smoke alone, brother. There you go. Take care, guys. Right, see ya. Good night.